Hello and welcome to Luna's Literary Corner. On this channel, I talk about books, grammar, and other literary avenues. Today, I'll be recapping the books that I read in July. In July, I introduced my second book theme of the year, Books with Monday in the title. My birthday was in July, so I decided to read books that had my name. And I had fun finding the different books. I had to go on Goodreads and sort through a, sort, a lot of different lists. Um, but I came across so many different options that it was actually hard to choose just the four or five that I ended up going with. While I didn't read as many books as I did last month, I still read more than one book, and that was my main goal. I don't have a book theme for August, but I do have one for September, so stay tuned for that. Anywho, let's jump into the list. The Monogram Murders is an Agatha Christie mystery written by the author Sophie Hanna. The book follows Christie's famous detective Perot as he joins the Scotland Yard with their detective, Detective Catchpool. The two work together to solve the mystery of three guests found murdered in a hotel with monogram cufflinks in their mouths. When choosing this, I wanted to choose something that I could read digitally and could be a quick finish, so I went with one of my normal go-tos, Agatha Christie Mysteries. This was the only one that showed up on the app I used, and I wish that it didn't. I knew going in that it wasn't written by Christie, but I was hoping that it would still be an enjoyable read. Unfortunately, it wasn't. While the mystery was fine, if a little convoluted, the main narrator, Detective Catchpool, was not an enjoyable character. For being a detective, he missed many obvious connections, and he seemed like he had to be guided everywhere throughout the case. The book addresses... From the beginning, how he does not like the sight of dead bodies laid out like at a funeral home, and this leaves him to make many mistakes, such as leaving the crime scene unattended. I can't speak much about Perot since I don't have much experience with his character. I'm also not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, even though I've looked it up multiple times. However, I hope that will change by reading more of him through Christie's voice. Overall, I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany Jackson is about a girl named Claudia as she tries to figure out what happened to her friend Monday, who she believes is missing. This was an interesting book to read, especially because the girl who goes missing shares my name and other characteristics. However, I eagerly flipped the pages in order to determine what happened to her and how the story evolved. This book covers some difficult topics, but it was very well written, and the characters were extremely realistic. I felt like I went to school with many of the characters described in the book, and that added to my immersion of the story. The one downside is that the timeline is confusing when reading a majority of the beginning of the book. This caused some frustration, as many of my coworkers can attest to. While I began to understand it better by the end, I had to wait a while for that connection to be made. I will have a spoiler-filled discussion on this book out later this month, so stay tuned for that. Overall, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Mr. Monday by Garth Nix is the first book in the Keys of the Kingdom series. The book follows Arthur, a preteen with asthma, who is given a key that unlocks a world unknown to humans. Throughout the story, he must battle dog creatures, survive in a new land, and try to save the world from a deadly virus all in one day. I came across this book back when I was in elementary, and I was only interested because my name was in the title. While I didn't remember much about it, I remembered not enjoying it. Because of this, I was dreading it when I chose it for my reading challenge. However, I was pleasantly surprised once I began reading it. This was a good start with world building, and I loved the overall concept of the story. While there were a few plot points that didn't make sense or were annoying, I enjoyed it, and I'm interested in reading the rest of the series. Overall, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Alice in Murderland is a mixture of the fantastical elements of Alice in Wonderland and a battle royale story. In this volume, more secrets are revealed and more confusion is brought in. 
There were some good fight scenes, but Stella is still oblivious as she was before. Again, it's hard to explain a book in the middle of the series without discussing the entire set, so I can't do a full review until I complete the video on the entire series. But, you know, this is one of the books that I read this month and I wanted to share it with you. Overall, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Blue Monday Volumes 1 and 2 follows a group of high school friends as they go through life. Me coming across this, along with Monday's Not Coming, is what led to me choosing the Monday theme for July. In the first volume, the main storyline focuses on the main character, Blue, and her desire to get tickets to see her favorite musician, Adam Ant. Something that is introduced in this volume and is continued in the other is the influence of music on these characters. I love music, so I always like seeing its incorporation. There was a second storyline where Blue falls in love with a substitute teacher who eventually starts kind of working there often. That storyline I didn't enjoy as much as the first one. Um, so this first storyline was good, but the characters were hit or miss for me, and that second storyline wasn't really needed. Overall, I gave this volume a 3 out of 5 stars. In the second volume, the main storyline focuses on Blue trying to get a tape back from her guy friends that featured her nude and shaving. The volume had a good start with the friends playing a murder mystery game. Then... They completely lost me when they introduced the main story. The sometimes likable and sometimes unlikable characters became completely insufferable. It is one thing if Blue and her friends were taking this as a joke. However, Blue is frantically trying to get the tape back and maintain her reputation with other students and her teachers. When her guy friends told the school that there is a tape with her on it, out there in the world. Her teachers started looking at her in a different way and started passing judgments on her. First, don't agree for the teachers doing that. But second, why would they do that if they are her friends? <sighs> her friends made fun of her for trying to date one of the guys to get the tape back. In the end, it didn't matter because the guys posted the tape on public broadcasting television anyway. There were only two redeemable parts of the story. The beginning and when the girls brutally defeated the boys in the soccer match. When I first finished this, I originally gave it a three or a two because, you know, I was following some of the reviews from the others saying, oh, these are just teenagers being teenagers. But the more I thought about it, the more frustrated I got and the lower score I had to give it. Overall, I gave this a 1 out of 5 stars. At the night school, different mythical and magical creatures learn everything from calculus to spell casting. However, a mystery is brewing in these dark halls and the main character Alex must find out what is happening. This was a random pick as I wanted to check out another manga to have a break in between longer fiction and non-fiction. However, it was pretty enjoyable. The book starts off immediately, so there is no backstory in the story itself. All the backstory you receive comes from the summary on the back of the book. Because of this, when certain things happen in the school or to the characters, there's really no time to have any emotional connections. However, the characters that they do introduce were enjoyable and there's a little kind of demon creature that is just very adorable. Overall, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm still keeping up with my goal of reading so I'm really happy about that. Like I mentioned earlier, I will not have a specific theme for August because I want to make a dent in the 15 to 20 books I have checked out from the library. However, I will have a theme for September, and my hint for that theme is that I love alliteration. If you can guess what it is, post in the comment section below. Again, I'm always interested in learning more about other people's thoughts on books and authors, so if you have read any of the books that I read in July, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, I'm always accepting of any book suggestions.
Bye and have a wonderful day.